Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here again with another A-level chemistry exam question walkthrough. This time I'm looking at Kp and the equilibrium constant to do with pressure. As ever, when I'm working through the question, I will write down my thoughts around the question in blue and the answers that are going to get you the marks in green. If you'd like to download the question and do it before I do the walkthrough, then the questions are available in the description as a PDF file. In this exam question, we are looking at sulfuryl chloride, which is this formula here, SO2Cl2, dissociating according to the equilibrium here, where the sulfuryl chloride turns into sulfur dioxide and chlorine gas, and the delta H is plus 93 kilojoules per mole, which that positive symbol tells us that it is endothermic, and that will probably be relevant later in a Le Chatelier style situation. We're given some details about one mole of sulfuryl chloride, so that is the initial moles of one, and it's dissociating, and the equilibrium mixture contains 0 0.75 moles of Cl2 at 673 Kelvin, and the total pressure is 125 kilopascals. That's almost always worth noting for a question that looks like it's about to be asking us about Kp. And so it is asking us about Kp because we can see in the very first question, it asks us to write an expression for the equilibrium constant Kp. And equilibrium constant questions generally are all the same format. We always have the equilibrium constant being equal to, and because this is pressures, we've got Kp, and it's equal to the products on the top of the expression over the reactants on the bottom. Now, because it is a homogeneous equilibrium where everything is a gas, we're using partial pressures, and there's two main different ways of having partial pressures. The first is to go Pp for the partial pressure, and then SO2, multiplied by the partial pressure of Cl2, that would be on the top, and then on the bottom we would have the partial pressure of the sulfuryl chloride, like so. Alternatively, you could have the exact same expression only with a single lowercase p, or alternatively as well, as I'll show at the bottom, you could have it in brackets, just so we're absolutely clear that we're talking about partial pressures rather than the element phosphorus but any of these is absolutely fine. And remember, if there were any coefficients in front of any of these formulae in the equation, we would have to put brackets around all of this and put a superscript two or three or whatever the multiplier was, just to show the significance of this particular chemical is greater because of a coefficient in the equation. But that's not necessary here because very nicely, they're all one. And then the next question goes on to ask us about calculating the total moles of gas present in the equilibrium mixture. Well, that's what I started to write up at the top where I had the initial moles of the sulfuryl chloride and the equilibrium moles. So what we need to do is we need to work out what the change is. So we should have ICE for the initial moles, the equilibrium moles and the change. And if we look at the product, we can see that we've got 0.75 moles of chlorine Unless we're told differently, we assume that we've got zero moles of chlorine and sulfur dioxide at the start. What that means is the change is 0.75. And one side of the equation is going to go up, and we can see from the numbers that that's the right-hand side, and the other side's going to go down. And so factoring in any of the coefficients, the change will be the same everywhere. And so because all of the coefficients are one, one of them makes one of these plus one of these, everything is going to change by the same number. So the sulfur dioxide will also go up by 0 0.75. And the sulfuryl chloride will go down by 0 0.75 to 0 0.25. And so what that means is the total number of moles of gas present at equilibrium is just simply the sum of this bottom row here. So 0 0.25 plus two lots of 0.75, which is going to give us a total of 1.75 moles. Then in part C, they ask us for a general expression for the partial pressure of any gas in a mixture of gases in terms of the total pressure. And so the partial pressure P 
is equal to the total pressure, which is sometimes given a capital P, I'm just going to write total pressure, multiplied by the mole fraction of a particular gas in that mixture. And the mole fraction, I'll write this at the bottom, is equal to the moles of that particular substance divided by the total moles in that mixture. And we're going to need that expression from C part one in the very next question because we've been asked to calculate the partial pressure of sulfuryl chloride and the partial pressure of chlorine in the equilibrium mixture. And so the partial pressure of sulfuryl chloride will be the total pressure, which is 125 kilopascals, multiplied by the mole fraction of sulfuryl chloride, which is 0 0.25 for the moles of sulfuryl chloride, divided by the total number of moles, which was 1.75. And so the partial pressure is going to be 17.9 kilopascals. And then the partial pressure of chlorine is going to be the same expression, 125 multiplied this time by 0.75 because that was the mole moles of chlorine and the mole fraction then we have to divide that 0.75 by 1.75 and this time we get 53.6 kilopascals. Now quick reasonableness check, remember the total pressure is 125 and so the sulfuryl chloride was 17.9, the chlorine was 53.6. If we look at the data, the sulfur dioxide is going to be also 53.6, and that seems like that will add together to give us 125 kilopascals. And that's what we need to have. The point is, the total pressure is the sum of the individual partial pressures in any given mixture. And then last of all, they've asked us to calculate a value for Kp for the reaction and give its units. So the value of Kp is nice and straightforward because we've already written the expression up at the top. So we have to do our 53.6 for the sulfur dioxide, 53.6 for the chlorine, divide it by 17.9, and that gives us 161. In terms of the units, well, what we have to do there is we have to take the units of the partial pressure of sulfur dioxide, kilopascals, then chlorine's units are also going to be kilopascals, and then the sulfuryl chlorides will also be kilopascals. And so then when we simplify this, one kilopascals from the top cancels out a kilopascals from the bottom, and so we're left with kilopascals on the top, and that will be the units for Kp in this situation. So one mark for the units, one mark for the final answer, and one mark for the expression for Kp with the numbers substituted in. And then the final part of this question is three marks worth of Le Chatelier. And the question is asking us to state the effect, if any, of an increase in temperature on the value of Kp and to explain our answer. So it'll be one mark for both of those things. So remember what happens in an equilibrium. If we do something, the equilibrium will shift to do the opposite. And so that's what Le Chatelier's principle is. Equilibria shift to oppose change. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to watch my explanation video about Le Chatelier's principle at a different time. So the change in this instance is we that have increased the temperature, the equilibrium is going to shift to decrease the temperature, which is therefore going to be the endothermic direction. And in this particular instance, because of that positive enthalpy change which we noted earlier, we know that the forward reaction is endothermic. And then what that means is we can do the explanation first. Increasing the temperature has sent the equilibrium in the endothermic direction. So that's mark number two. Looking back, therefore, on the effect that that will have on Kp, well, if we drop the Kp expression back in, it's easy to explain that since equilibrium has shifted to the right, that means that we will have a greater number of moles of SO2 and Cl2. That means that the partial pressures of SO2 and Cl2 will have gone up, which means that the term on top of the expression will have increased in size, and so the value of Kp will increase. And then moving on to F to finish us off, state the effect, if any, of an increase in the total pressure on the value of Kp. So we could give a, a detailed explanation of this, but what I suggest you do is that you remember that only temperature 
affects the value of KP. So any other thing that they care to ask us about here, that is irrelevant. Only temperature affects the value of KP. It might affect the position of equilibrium, and in fact it would, but it wouldn't affect the value of KP. So the answer is no effect. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again next time.